the transfer window has just slammed shut and the end of it was a lot better than the beginning. I'll, I'll definitely say that. We have brought in some really, really quality players to really strengthen the squad and give us a good chance of staying up this season. And our form at the moment kind of says that we're going to do that anyway. Welcome back, episode 33 of Oldham 2 Ohm. As I always say, if you're enjoying this type of content and you're not yet subscribed, I don't know what you're, what you're doing because you're missing out on when I post new videos. So if you could, it would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to hit 400, you can make that happen. Smash a like because I haven't put any videos out for a week, so that kind of hurts the YouTube algorithm. It gets really sad when you don't put videos out. So if you can, you know, watch this, hit some likes, throw some comments down there as well. It'll help push the video out to a few more people, which is all good. Right, we are back. It is the 12th of September. Um, I did say finances were in the toilet. They're actually not bad at one and a half million in credit. It's the wage budget. We are, you know, 4,000 over. Actually, it's not actually that bad. Committed to spend 10,000. But yeah, we look at the projection wise and um, by the end of this season, is that this season? No, that's this season. We're 5 million debt, 10 million, 16. But I'm hoping probably by the end of this season, we're in the Premier League and that won't be a problem. Money is no problem in the Premier League. Um, like I said, yeah, since we've left you, it, it's it's been good. It's been really, really good. Um, we beat Sutton United 3-0 in the Carabao Cup. Ipswich Town 2-0 in the league. Uh, Peterborough 4-1. Uh, we then lost to Bournemouth because, you know, I think they're top of the table at the moment. Uh, we then pumped Salford, who are in the championship with us, 6-1. Count them, 6-1 in the um, in the uh, Carabao Cup. And a good 1-0 win over a Millwall. And then we had a, a big big gap. I don't know why we had a two-week break. I don't know what was happening there. So we played a game against Main Road and we, uh, we put a few goals uh, behind them. We've actually drawn Manchester United in the EFL Cup third round. So we play them away. So it's not as good a money spinner as the FA Cup, but it'll be interesting. We've we've had a good go with it. They were under 23s over the last couple of years. It'll be really, really good to beat their big boys. Um, League-wise, we are ninth. Only the two losses to obviously Sunderland and Bournemouth. I did say Bournemouth were top of the table, but um, they've never been top of the table and are actually struggling uh, quite a bit and are just ahead of us on uh, on 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 the fact that they start with B and we don't. West Brom, who we face today, are top of the table, so that could be an interesting one. Millwall down the bottom with Peterborough, who we have beaten. So we have been looking really good. Benny Kuto has three assists as well, uh, which is good because he's been out injured for a while as well. So I think we're looking really, really good at the moment. Three solid wins. I'm uh, really, really happy with that because I was worried that, you know, I mean, like the... I mean, I guess we've beaten Millwall, Peterborough, and Ipswich, who are teams below us, and that's who we need to be. And Peterborough and Millwall um, are in the relegation, so I think beating them is, is definitely going to help us uh, achieve what we need to achieve. Transfers-wise, yes, it has been quite hectic towards the end of this transfer window. We've got a few players to go through. So uh, depending on time, it might just be West Brom today. I can't see a sneaking in Cardiff. They are down the bottom. Um, so it might just be the West Brom, game, West Brom game. Let's go check out those transfers. I think we had four before I left you last time. I think, I think we've at least got another 10 now. Let's go check them out. Oh, and one who's coming in later. So it could even be more. So the first player in is uh, Harrison Ashby. We we needed a right back, and uh, we went in for one um, at Rangers. Uh, and he was Spanish, didn't get a work permit, so we've come in for Harrison Ashby here, who's 24 years old. Um, he looks really solid all round. Um, is some white in his technicals, but they are 10 for his crossing and dribbling. His marking passing is good. Everything else is in yellows. Nothing stand out, but I think a really really solid player at uh, at Championship level and. He is, yeah, he's only had two games off the bench in a Carabao Cup game, but he's played really, really well in them so far. So I am super duper excited about having him. Um, unfortunately, we only have him till January, so we might try and look to um, push push that out if possible. We are paying a fee as well, which is the first time I've had to book out money for um, 
for a loan. And the reason for this is because uh, it's actually my director of football who who um, who made this made this offer. Um, so I don't know if you know about that, but if you go to uh, if I remember where it is, staff responsibilities. Um, you go to oh, where is it? Um, scout is it scouting? No, it's not scouting. Transfers and contracts. Uh, as you can see, initiating player signings for Oldham Athletic. I've got Dean Austin, my director of football, in charge of that, and the under 21s and the under 18. So, I mean, I can also make bid for, bids for players, but occasionally you, your director of football will come in and just be like, hey, I'm checking out this guy. So, you, you know, I'm, I'm using him, for, and that's what he's there for, and he's not bad. So, um, I mean, and he got us that right back where I could not find one for love or money through our scouts and whatnot. And I'm not like using player search either. So I'm just using the scouts and, and what's around there. So you, utilizing him that way is brilliant. Another player in, Jaden Fuller, was a director of football one. I decided, yeah, we'll let him go through. Um, striker was at Cardiff Met Uni, um, scoring a few goals. So I thought, let's just bring him in. Not a lot of money. And we'll just see what happens with him. Another lone player, Barry Connie. This was me. He wasn't properly scouted. I possibly pulled the trigger a little bit too early on this guy. But the fact is, his contract was up. So I didn't want to sign him, and I thought I'll get him on loan, see what he actually looks like, and then we can try and sign him. Um, we're not paying him that much money, to be honest. Four hundred pounds per week. Um, that's it. So I mean, he probably won't do it. Yeah. So we just thought if he turns out a lot better than you know he looked, because I didn't, he wasn't fully scattered. We'll pull the trigger and get him. But I don't know at this point. Another loan is Richard Foster, a defensive, um, a defensive, def a defender from Dortmund. Really, really got like this guy. We're paying him nothing, which is brilliant. Really, really like that. Great physicals. Mentals are good. His only stat that he needs for that central defender on defend uh, is his heading is the only one in single figures. All the other ones are good. He, I think he could be good. He's played one Carabao Cup game, scored a goal. So he's off to a flying start. He is inconsistent, but, you know, we'll work on that. And he's also English as well, which is excellent. Our final loan signing is in Glendoir Massey. He is a central midfielder coming in from Everton. He's in as a, uh, a bit of a squad player for us. Once again, once again, not paying for anything for him, which is absolutely brilliant. Yes, he's not fantastic, but we just need an extra body in that midfield just to, you know, bulk it out a bit. Uh, adding some quality bulk to this team. I like his work rate is really, really high, which is excellent news here. 21 under 21 caps as well. Uh, other than that, never played a professional game. So he'll come into the squad very, very soon, just getting him up to full fitness. Two more players, and the uh, penultimate one is Teddy Sharmanlow, which is a goalkeeper who we had on trial for quite a while. Um, slightly better than Ted Kurd, and I think Ted Kurd's gone out on loan, so pull the trigger, got Sharman Lowe in, and, uh, you know, he'll sit on the bench while Ted Kurd gets some really good quality first team experience. And the last signing is Ian Perveda, former Leeds winger. Uh, really excited to get Ian Perveda in. I do like his physicals and his dribbling. He's got great flair. Once again, just add some quality, quality um, sort of squad rotation to our uh, team, with obviously us only having Bridgie and um, Luca Klanik as our really first two starting wingers, bringing Perveda, because the championship is a demanding season, bringing him in is brilliant, and played two seasons with two seasons with Rotherham in the championship, wasn't great, but I mean, I can probably get something better out of him, wasn't great, but I can probably get a bit better out of him. So Ian Fader, we have one last player who doesn't join until December, but I'm super duper excited about him. And that is Jahan Solis. He is a Colombian 21 year old midfielder who looks absolutely amazing. I love the fact he gets forward whenever possible because I am going to play you as a central midfielder on attack. And look at that. First touch, long shots, passing, tackling, technique. Okay, his anticipation composure a bit low and off the ball, but teamwork's not great. But we can work on that. He's only 21. Three stars at the moment, joining for absolutely nothing, which is brilliant. So excited to get this guy in. I actually had to fend off a few other clubs for him as well, which I, I couldn't believe. The, we made the bid. They all came in. I was like, we've lost this guy for sure. Absolutely lost him. And in the end, he decided to sign for us, which was oh, absolutely brilliant. So I'm really excited dude, with the players we've bought in. We've added, a, you know, some most of them are sort of squad players, but they just really give the squad a bit more depth. 
uh, and the like. Now, uh, players out, mind you. We have had some interesting ones go out. Jay Mingy, as you may know from last episode, he wanted to leave. He wants to go play for a team in a higher division. Um, so... In the end, he signed for Peterborough in the same league as us. Played three games off the bench, hasn't played well, and um, and Peterborough are in the relegation zone. So, Jay, I think the uh, Skybet League One Player of the Year award has gone to your head just a little bit. And, mm, yeah, so with him going, that's why I just needed those other couple of guys to go come in like i said um we went through a fair few of these probably the best thing to do is the date situation ted kerr's gone to old shot town lewis brown going to shrewsbury on loan david robson out on loan um sam mcdermott i don't even know who he is young kid uh daniel maher another young kid dean jennings gone out on loan alfie ward and we've come to where i left you last time so very few players out on loan but we have recouped three million in transfers there with only spending the 14k and that is only on harry ashby's loan so i'm super duper happy after the first was it four transfers we had another one two three four five six seven eight players always being a bit ambitious when i said 10 but Another, uh, those players all on freeze and loans have really made the squad a lot, a lot better. Um, we've got a whole bunch of players on loan, but I don't think we'll be signing them because we've got no wages. I wanted to get this guy in as a backup left back for Betty Kuto. He is so a hell of a lot better than Betty Kuto. Um, but I don't think we're going to get it in because he wants way too much money and I don't think I can afford any of it. So a few other guys there on loan, but what we'll do is we'll just get rid of them. And we've got uh, our squad today to play uh, West Bromwich Albion. Uh, no bidding kudo, he is injured down for a while. As you'll notice, we've got some players here supporting. Brandon Brian War wants to leave because he was upset that Foster came in, a player on loan who's going to take his spot. And I was like, mate, you got to earn your spot. And so he's cracked it. Um, I told him we'd give him some player time, but apparently... Um, He's leaving at the end of the year, so um, I'm probably going to try and sell him, which is annoying as well because he is also homegrown at club. Now, he's probably not going to be good enough to play in the Premier League, but the fact he's homegrown at club could have made a little bit of difference at some point. But, um, yeah, I think he's probably going to be sold in January because... I don't want to lose him for nothing. Anyway, the team today to play West Brom, we are going to get into a game eventually. We've got Norman in goal, new boy Ashby at right back, Hughes and Roberts, Hughes, that's his name, Sam Hughes. Murray's going to fill in at left back. We've got Noel John at the base midfield, Jones and, and um, JB, Klanick, Pervader on the right, Sosa up front, and on the bench, uh, we've got Massey, Foster, uh, Bridges injured, so is Harrison, Dudzak, Dudziak. Um, so a bit of a blow there. Something else I want to put, point out to you, with obviously getting that Colombian guy from work permit, Luca Klanick uh, cannot get a new work permit. So I don't know how we got him one in the first place. It's annoying. And Bridgie's contract runs out the end of the season and we can't get him a new contract either. So I don't know what I'm going to do when he leaves at the end of the year. And Klanick, I think, has got a few more, another year after him. So mm, I don't know what's going to happen then, but, you know, those are problems to deal with at a later date. Their future Woody's problem, and he can deal with him. Right, come on, let's go. We've got enough talking. We need to give some numbers out to players. Let's see what they want. 20, that's not really a backup goalkeeper number, but I think one. Ted Kurd's already got, but Ted Kurd's out on loan. How's he get number? Mm, mm, not liking it. All right, 20, 26, 24. Sounds good to me after all that kerfaffle. All right, it's important we take uh, full advantage of the home crowd. West Brom, top of the table. This is really, really going to test us here um, <clears throat> as we see how we can fare against the best team in the championship. A solid win here puts us up and around these promotion spots, which um, is good. I mean, it's all good, but, uh, I mean, getting promoted to the Premier League would be absolutely incred incredible, but we, we are nowhere near ready for that. Nowhere near ready for it. I mean, I said last year we probably weren't ready for the championship. I don't think we were. 
and we stormed League 1, which can be a problem, can be a big, big problem with that. The jump between League 1 and League 2 isn't very big. If you do well in League 2, you can go to League 1, and before you know it, you're in the championship, and you're getting absolutely pumped. But we are 30 minutes in here. We had one highlight that didn't really lead to much, and we've got uh, West Brom now on a... Uh, with a good chance, but they put that shot wide. Lewis Potter there, and we've got Norman now uh, going out to Murray here at left back. Sam Murray. Now, I did say as well at one point I was going to play like the rotated squad in the Carabao Cup. I haven't been able to do that because we haven't had the squad to rotate at the moment, but, um, uh, and I'm probably not going to do that. <laughs> we'll just see how we go. Uh, Pervader now on the ball, on a yellow as well. Files, finds Noel John in that defensive midfield role. Ashby now, great ball for, to Pervader. Pervader, Klanik, Klanik, it's in, it's Sosa! Good stuff from Sosa there. Incredible play by Klanik. I thought it was Klanik uh, with a header, but it is Pervader with a uh, lovely cross. Klanik heads it down and Sosa just gets it off his head and uh, it just directs it into the goal. It is West Brom on the ball now after being absolutely shell-shocked by the uh, Oldham attack. And is Klanik now on the ball again. Finds Jones bursting through. Jones, Sosa! Goncalo Sosa! Second goal! Oh yeah, the championship is easy. Too easy. Look at Klanik here. Finds Jones. Jones bursting through that centre midfielder on, on attack. A nice ball and Sosa just boom, back of the net. Oh my god, we're killing West Brom here. Absolutely killing them. Lewis Potter now. Down the outside of Ashby. Can he make it count? Norman. Great save, Magnus Norman. Corner now from West Brom. Gotta hold him out. Gotta hold him out until half time. Punched away by Norman, I think that was. McAllister on the ball now. Looking to get across in. Oh, Niall John. Cool as you like. Norman goes out to Ashby on the right here. Finds Klanik. JB now. JB with a great raking ball to Pervader. Pervader. Oh, I thought Sosa had a hat trick then. Sosa almost had a hat trick. Ah. Oh, well, it is half time. We've had two shots on target and scored with both of them. So, great start. Great start. We're going to go into the sheds. We're going to point the finger. Um, I think we're doing well, but we can definitely find another gear. Remember, never tell your players at a half time that things are going great and to keep it up because it backfires badly and has done many, many a time. We have another link shouting thing out. Jones with a free kick now. Dinks it over. Hughes off the crossbar. Nice stuff from Sean Hughes there. All right, we've got a throw in here. It is Ashby, the new boy. Now John tries to cut that through, but... Too many West Brom players. Hughes there. Roberts on the ball. Pervader. Ian Pervader. Not the best finish, but we will take that. He's looking a little bit tired. Um, he probably wasn't going to play the whole game anyway, being his first uh, start. John and Klanik now. Klanik uh, loses out to the West Brom player. Teller now. Bearing down on goal. That's an easy goal for Nathan Teller. His fourth goal of the season. And West Brom are back into this. We don't want to watch that. I'm going to leave it as it is. We will make another substitution probably in about, oh, I don't know, five minutes as the game decides to have some sort of like conniption here as um, we almost score our own goal. So, great stuff. Embleton now with the corner. Headed away, Klanik getting his head to the ball and the highlight ends. Now, I mean, at the end of the day, a draw with West Brom is no sort of, you know, nothing to poo-poo about. The fact that we're leading is annoying. Right, uh, we're going to bring Massey on for JB. Do we, or do we want Gary Sanders? Gary Sanders is actually better, and he is our player, so we're going to bring him on. Uh, Sam Murray, probably not. Uh, Mitchell Roberts is going to come off for Foster. And we did say Ian Pervader, um, Lord Joshi Newfill can come on for him. We'll give the theme talk, point the finger, go out there, boys, grab a third goal, shut the game down. And if Sosa grabs his hat trick, he will come off for um, what's his face? Kid from Man City, who've totally forgotten his name. I'm a great manager. Great manager. Can't even remember their names. Well, well, nothing else has happened, so we will obviously make a few more substitutions since we have got them. Uh, it is Callum Jones looking tired, so it is going to be Massey. 
coming over him and Niall John as well, actually. I didn't realize that Niall John was that tired. Oh, Guaru. That's the guy. Uh, Ashby. Brian Wall on for Ashby. Probably should have put Matheson on the bench, actually, instead. But we will... Um, not a lot of time back. Left. Go and make an impact. Brian Wall, who, you know, cracked it. But this is really good. West Brom will stay top of the table. We will be on 12 points. So with the game in hand on QPR and them, which is huge, considering if we win those that game in hand, we got a 15 points. And that's second in the table. Obviously, some other teams could also win. But, you know... That's by and by. We've got another highlight here. Sam Murray finds Sosa looking for his hat trick. Massey now chips the ball over. Klanik on the head. It's in. It's Luca Klanik. First goal of the season. And it is Oldham 3, West Brom 1. And that is the game done and dusted. Got another highlight here. Wallace Murray clears it away. Sanders on the ball now. It's gone a little bit funny here. Newville. Newville, Sosa, oh Sosa, there it is, Sosa gets his hat-trick, and we put top of the table West Brom to the sword, scoring four goals, 4-1 four, over West Bromwich Albion, absolutely pump them, this is top of the table West Brom, top of the table, and there it is, um, we take our chances, I don't think West Brom have lost again, that's their first loss of the season, and we absolutely pump them. I'd love a permanent deal for Sosa. Absolutely would love it. He was superb. Pervader was good. Oh, absolutely loving it. Got some scouting here. Keep on moving up. We're fifth in the championship. We are playoff material here. Right. Since things are going quite well, I'm going to, you know, play a fair few games. Well, half a dozen or so. We're probably all of September and we'll come back October for like Stoke and Huddersfield maybe. Or maybe it's a Watford Coventry. I don't know. Welcome back for Stoke. Stoke at home sounds very good. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that episode. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.